Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to Ask the Jeff number six. Hi. First, a quick announcement. Uh, the character-specific Ask the Jeff, I'll keep them as they are. But for the numbered Ask the Jeff, I will start doing with Twitch chat questions only instead of YouTube comments as well, because I end up with like three, four hundred questions on every video, and like two hundred of them are like very similar. So I end up having to repeat myself a lot, and a lot of them are also questions that were answered in a previous one. All in all, it. It makes it a lot harder to manage all of the questions when they're just all left in a comment. It'll be easier to do, but also I think it'll be a lot more fun both for me and for you guys because it's a different experience seeing a question, answering it, and the guy you're answering just not being there versus you're answering a question and like you get you, directly you can see whether the person like understands your answer, whether uh, it covers all they wanted to know. Uh, with that being said, we can get into it. Hypothetically, official A4 and aggravate becomes Rido 2.0. Does it kill aggravate? teams or do we have other options which aren't cope so for context from what we know about quicken and aggravate quicken happens when with electro plus dendro it puts the enemy in a quickened state and while they're quickened if you apply electro to them it will trigger aggravate you don't need to have an aura well it's not going to consume the quickened stuff like quicken will stay on the enemy and so every time you're applying electro you'll trigger aggravate even if there's already electro on the enemy in other words the way that aggravate works and is designed is you really want multiple aggravates you want a lot of aggravates you want you want characters that apply electro very often now because of aggravate is an electro reaction when your on field tr character triggers aggravate Fischl will have her ascension 4 trigger and when Fischl's ascension 4 triggers it deals electro damage to an enemy but then on top of that it applies electro which means it also triggers aggravate in other words every aggravate that you trigger with your character that's on field is also going to make Fischl aggravate technically this can only happen every 0.5 seconds so it's not going to be every aggravate if you trigger two within 0.5 five seconds but it's gonna be like 80 to 90 percent of the aggravates you trigger are gonna tr also trigger official's ascension 4 which is also gonna aggravate which means using official and aggravate teams effectively doubles the amount of aggravates you get and because official is completely off field and her damage is actually really good and because she'll get, trigger aggravate so often she will basically be a core option for most if not all aggravate teams so what they could do is they could make it so that for the purposes of undone be thy sinful hex aggravate does not count as an electro reaction because technically aggravate is electro on quicken but it could basically make it so that aggravate doesn't count as a reaction because it doesn't remove an aura it doesn't remove an element from an enemy it just applies electro so they could technically get away with saying aggravate is not a reaction and so it won't proc officials before and they could make it so that it doesn't work now from what we've seen from leaks it currently does but they can still change it before the patch goes live that has the context for the question and the question is if it is removed right if it's uh <laughs> if it's right out out of existence which is basically red and beto apparently used to work in the beta and they removed that when it made it to live servers if it's removed how much weaker would aggravate be and would you still be able to have good aggravate teams short answer is it would be a lot weaker but you would still have some good aggravate teams there are two other electro units that can function with aggravate uh, that are mostly off field you have yaimiko and you have beta both of them function with aggravate worse than official does but that doesn't mean they function terribly with it. It's still okay. Yaimiko would work a little bit better than Beto with Aggravate because Yaimiko has inherent synergy with elemental mastery in her kit, but they can both function in Aggravate teams. And so if you wanted to go double Electro, you can still do it. You can do on-field Raiden with off-field Yaimiko. You can do on-field Kutsing with off-field Beto. These are still things that will work, but even if they remove the interaction with Fischl, with her Ascension 4, Fischl is still going to be good in teams like that that trigger Agave because Fischl is just good enough of a unit to be played even without that. But it will definitely be significantly weaker. I think that specifically some Raiden Yaimiko teams might not be that much worse than official teams so for those teams specifically if official were to not work it wouldn't affect them but i think as a general rule yeah it would definitely bring the power of aggravate down how significant would an em substat be for electro drivers is it better than attack percent or crit stats so here's the thing right let's take official as an example when you have c6 the amount of electro applications will depend on how many times your c6 procs but that's going to depend on how many times your attacks which is going to depend on the rotation so let's just look at c pre c6 official first so how much damage do we get from that base damage before defenses before crit before damage percent before like most of this but what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically be comparing the percentage damage increase on attack versus on em 
With zero procs from her her and send in four, she gets quite a bit more damage from her attack values than her EM values. Actually, so this is damage from attack, this is damage EM, and this is damage total. This is no sense. Let's look at the talk sense and EM sense, right? So the talk sense and with EM sense. And as you can see, with this, attack sense is actually quite a bit better. The percentage increase or attack sense is 15% and an EM sense is 4%. Ooh, that's pretty bad. But the reality is that's assuming her ascension four never triggers. But assuming they don't change it, the reason you play Fetchel is because her Ascension 4 is going to be broken in Aggravate teams. So let's take a look at what happens when you start actually getting more Aggravates. Sorry, the, the A4, right? When you add one Ascension 4 trigger, it makes the percentage increase from an attack sense go down by 0.4%, and from an EM sense go up by 0.4%. In other words, when you look at her motion value from her skill, she gets a lot. But her skill has very slow internal cooldown, which means that you get a lot of motion values, but a very small amount of aggravates as the baseline. And in that baseline, a lot of motion values, small amount of aggravates, attack is a lot better than EM. But the more Ascension 4 triggers you get, the better elemental mastery becomes. In something like a uh, Kutsing team, you can actually get upwards of like 20, 25, potentially even 30 aggravate procs. Let's go for 25 for now. And at 25, they're very similar. Effectively, right, the reason why that is is because as a baseline, you have, right, at zero, you have 4,600 motion value versus eight aggravate triggers. But with 25, you've got 6,600 motion value with 33 aggravate triggers. Your aggravate damage is being multiplied by four, but your attack percent damage, sorry, your, 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 your motion value damage, your talent damage, is being multiplied by 1.4. In other words, right, because her baseline kit is lots of motion values, low Electro app, but her Ascension 4 is low motion value, always an Electro app, then the more Ascension 4s you get, the better EM is. The main thing, though, to keep in mind is going to be, be, like even here, right, you're getting about half of your damage from your attack, about half of your damage from your EM, which means that whether you get attack or EM, it doesn't really matter. They're both about as good. But also, your attack percent doesn't increase with the attack sense, our damage from from aggravates doesn't increase with the em sense our damage from the talent levels or damage from from motion values doesn't increase which means both of those are only increasing part of your damage rather than all of your damage whereas something like crit on the other hand is a 24.5 percent damage increase or rather instead of looking at main stats let's look at a sub stats right so one sub stat is five percent one sub stat is 20 and one sub stat of this is 3.3 You've got your attack rolls, you've got your crit rolls, but your attack rolls only increase half of your damage, which means it's a but by about 2%, which means it's about 1%. Same for your EM rolls, whereas your crit rolls increase both of them by about 2%, so it is actually 2%. Or, if you really boil it down to like the most simple form you can you can conceptualize it, it's making your rectangle as, bi as big as possible. You got a square, right? And the things you can do, when you're getting an attack sense, what you're doing is you're taking this and you're increasing its size by, I don't know, half. So you're taking half of this and you're adding to it. And then you can move this here. That leaves you a rectangle with this size. But same thing if you get an EM sense. It'll just be a green thing instead. But if you're getting a crit sense instead, what you're doing is you're, instead of taking half of the yellow thing, you're taking half of the black thing here. And as you can see, it's bigger. It is bigger. <laughs> Basically, right? Your attack and your EM, they scale additively together. You've got one part and you've got the other part. Scaling your, 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 your talent damage doesn't increase the EM part. Scaling your aggravate damage doesn't increase the attack part. But crit, well, aggravate can crit and your talent can crit. Which means that crit scales both of them at the same time. So, all of this to say, when you're looking at the subsets that you want to get for Electro Units, whether you want Attack or EM more will depend on how often you trigger Aggravate and how good your motion values are. The more Aggravates you get, the more you like EM, and the better your talent values are, the more you like Attack. But, what will not change is all characters, all Electro characters that will trigger a lot of Aggravate, really do want Crit. 
and damage percent, but you can't get damage percent as a substat. So crit is slightly more valuable on aggravate carry than on, on aggravate units than it will be on other units. Or no, or rather, attack percent is less valuable on them than on other units. It's still good. It's still a set you want to be looking for, but as a general rule, right? I mean, this is relatively important, for, like right now, because a bunch of the units that will play in Electro teams will be using Thundering Fury or Thunder Soother artifact sets. And so you can actually already farm for them if you really want to. So it's, it's nice to know what stats to be looking for. Crit is the main stat you're looking for, even more so than usual. And Electro damage as well. Elemental Mastery and Attack are still valuable, but they're not as valuable as they are on other units. But yeah, that's basically it. That being said though, if you end up using an animal unit as your trigger for aggravate, which is doable, right? In my aggravate video, I talked about TF Kazuha. You'll also be able to use an on-field VV Sucrose, on-field VV Hazo as your way to trigger electro reactions. And when you trigger electro reactions, Fischl's A4 procs. It's not just an aggravate. You can also make it work with Swirl. You can make it work with Crystallize. But like specifically, right? Animal units, very good. In those cases, you'll be looking for elemental mastery because most of their damage will be coming from Swirl. TF Kazuha, wants Elemental Mastery main stat on all three of his stats. But yeah. Do I think Sayu has good potential as an Aggravate Driver, considering she has an infusion on her E and can use Aggravate herself? I think it's okay. Uh, Sayu doesn't hit as often as it looks like she does when she's rolling, and she has standard ICD. So effectively, right, like she doesn't actually apply that much Electro while she's rolling. I think that the biggest downside to Sayu is that you can't normal attack while you're on Sayu, right, while you're rolling, and there's so many characters that synergize with your on-field character normal attacking. I mean, Fischl herself, if you have her Constellation 6, not normal attacking on, her, on, on your active character is like pretty bad, prevents you from being able to play Beto. You could do it with like Fischl, Yaimiko, something like that. But I don't I don't see her as like a, a premium option for aggravate. Is VV bad for Kazuha and aggravate teens if you have a Dendro DPS? No. Because if you have an aggravate teens, it means you have an electro unit, and you have an if you have an electro unit, VV is broken. It means Kazuha is gonna be infusing with electro, which means his that most of it his damage will be electro. So VV is very good. That being said, right, uh, we've talked about some aggravate teams where you'll play Thundering Fury on Kazuha, but in those teams you need to have VV on another animal unit. Like, you don't want to ditch your VV, ever. VV, very good. On the last KQM podcast, you had, we mentioned that CB isn't real. Can I explain what that means? Yeah. It's not that crit value isn't relevant. Crit value is relevant. The biggest problem is that people use crit value as their only metric for artifact quality. All right, my Shailing, if you look at just her crit value, it's pretty bad. Well, not bad, but it's very underwhelming. It's pretty average. But then you realize that I have, like, a total of 16 substat rolls that are not crit, but that are valuable. I've got 17 ER here. I've got 35 EM, 22 ER here. I've got 54 EM here. I've got 12 ER here. I've got 13 ER here. Those are rolls that crit value doesn't count, but they're still good and they're still relevant and they're still important. But it takes a bit of more effort to count your good rolls and to look at how much crit value you have. So people still end up using crit value, but very often that leads people to thinking their build is better or worse than it actually is. If you only have crit value and that's it, You'll be like, oh wow, I have 220 crit value, my build's nuts. But if you have 220 crit value with no ER, EM, or attack subs on Cheng Ling, it's way worse than my build. I don't like crit value, and I think crit value is a very misleading metric because on a lot of characters, it doesn't give you the full picture. And because people use it too much, they end up throwing away good artifacts. Is it true that between the three Dendro characters going through Pono, the best one is Dendro Traveler? Yes and no. I think that Dendro Traveler is more likely. I guess you could call it power creep, because you'll have good Dendro Traveler team, and once we get more Dendro units, Dendro Traveler is probably not going to be that gonna, gonna see that much play anymore. But Dendro MC isn't great. Kole isn't great. Tirnati isn't great. But Dendro MC is better than Kole. And those are the only two field forms of off-field Dendro we have. So he's like kind of by default gonna be the best option for almost all of the Dendro teams. Tirnati, I think overall will be... Will I mean, Tirnati will still be good a few patches down the line, but he won't be great. It's like he has his niche, and I don't think they're gonna release a unit with a similar niche anytime soon. Would Tirnati, Kole, or DMC be better as a Melt Gunny support? Kole, and it's not even close. Tirnati struggles. Well, I mean, he doesn't have off-field Dendro. If you don't have off-field Dendro, then you can't fucking burn. You can't keep burning. DMC's burst explodes when it comes in contact with, with Pyro. You can't really use him in burning teams. And then Kole is the only option you have left. I'm not on top of that, Kole, um, Kole's 15 second burst. Bennett's 15 second burst. Ganyu's 15 second burst. Dayuna's 15 second skill. 
on hold. Not 15 second burst, but you don't have to use your burst every rotation, so it's not the end of the world. I'm actually very curious as to whether or not you'd be able to make 15 rotation, 15 second rotation uh, Melgon U teams, well, 16 second rotations, because you'd have Slackbo on, on Diona. And I'm curious as to whether you'd be able to make that work or not. You'd need R5 slack bow though, because anything under R5, it's going to be on cooldown for your second rotation. How would you order elements best to worst with Dendro inclusion? Oh, that's a good question. So, this was my ranking pre-Dendro. This definitely doesn't change. Animal will still be king, and this definitely doesn't change. Electro definitely goes up, and Pyro definitely doesn't change either. So, the biggest thing about Hydro is a lot of the, the Bloom, the Burgeon, and the, um, uh, the Hyperloom teams rely pretty heavily on your Dendro application, and we don't get any good Dendro applicators, like fast Dendro applicators, in 3.0. So, basically, right, what I'm, what I'm wondering is, I don't know where I put Dendro. Like, Cryo definitely goes here, Electro definitely goes somewhere in here, right? But like, I don't know if like Dendro's here, Dendro's here, or Dendro's here. Or even if Dendro's here. Probably not. Because you can't just look at it in the context of Dendro, right? In the context of Dendro, Electro is better than Hydro. But in the context of Dendro and the other teams, that's not the case. Hydro's too good, right? Outside of Dendro, all the Electro teams rely on Hydro. Outside of Dendro, all the Pyro teams rely on Hydro. Even inside of Dendro. But yeah, like it's it's definitely at least here. I think I think the bottom three stays the same and the top one stays the same. It's these three that I'm not sure. Is one dendro enough in aggravate teams? Yep, because you don't need a dendro aura. You just need to apply dendro every like eight seconds. I think that might be it for me for the day. I'm pretty tired. Goodbye, YouTube.